And eventually, there was a standoff. Uh, the Russians uh, were not very keen on developing Siberia for a while uh, because they were in the middle of the Napoleonic Wars and their uh, tensions were occupied in Europe. Uh, when the Tokugawa were fortifying the area, uh, thinking that the Russians were coming and being very, very scared uh, that there was going to be a war between Russia and Japan. Uh, and this tension uh, was eventually resolved uh, in a very interesting way uh, by a series of events that came to be known as the Golovnin Incident, which lasted from 1811 to 1813. Essentially what happened is in 1811, Vasily Golovnin, who was a captain of a small Russian ship, a sloop called the Diana, uh, a captain of the Russian Navy, uh, went ashore on the island of Kunashidi, which is right here, he was captured right here. Um, he went ashore during the course of a uh, charting expedition that the Russian Navy had ordered him to undertake. Um, when he uh, apparently um, went ashore, he was lured ashore by some samurai um, who wanted to uh, know what these Russians were doing in these waters, uh, who were afraid of the Russians, and who also wanted to uh, interrogate Golovnin uh, to get intelligence out of him. And uh, he was captured, and his second-in-command, uh, he was actually captured with seven of his crew members, uh, his second-in-command, who was kind of left in the bay uh, on the ship, Captain Pyotr Rickard, uh, had no idea what to do. Uh, he had 50 men with him. The Japanese garrison was uh, much, much stronger than that. So Rickard leaves, goes back to Russia, uh, goes back to Siberia, asks for help from the Russian government, uh, but the Russian central government doesn't really, is not really interested in Japan at this point in time. Uh, in 1811 and then in 1812, uh, these are significant dates in Russian history because in 1812 Napoleon invades Russia. Um, the local government officials uh, do offer some support, however, um, Rickard gets the sense that uh, the Japanese are very much afraid of the Russians following the raids of 1806 and 1807, um, and uh, he uh, understands that if there was to be peace between Russia and Japan, these raids would kind of have to be explained away, uh, but he's not really sure how to do that. Uh, everyone agrees uh, that uh, the blame for these raids can be shifted onto Khvostov and Davidov uh, from Rezanov, who was actually a representative of the Russian government and who did, in fact, order these raids. Uh, but all of these people were dead, so as long as you shifted the blame onto these subordinates, uh, you could then just say, oh, you know, we're really sorry, but these are just pirates. These are not under the control of the Russian government, and we had no idea what they were doing. Uh, but how to transmit this to the Tokugawa authorities wasn't clear. So what Rickard does is he sails back to Ezo and kind of sails around uh, until he captures uh, a counter hostage. He boards a Japanese ship, and on this ship is actually a very important merchant. This is a man named Takadaya Kahe, uh, who is responsible for provisioning the Japanese troops on some of these northern islands, uh, on Etorofu and Kunashiri, and he just kind of happened to be up there taking care of his business, um, and Rickard captures him um, and uh, kind of tries to use him as a counter hostage, but also as a means to communicate to Tokugawa authorities. Now, uh, in one of these accidents of history, Rickard and Kahe actually end up getting along together. Uh, they seem to uh, genuinely admire each other as dedicated professionals, uh, as people who were patriotic, um, and as people whose interests were in fact aligned. Neither one wanted war. Uh, the last thing that a Japanese merchant would want was Russian ships going and raiding, uh, capturing ships and in the area where his ships happen to be sailing. Uh, and Rickard, of course, knows that the Russians really can't fight a war uh, in East Asia right now and isn't inclined to do so. He knows this is a misunderstanding. Um, 
the capture of Golovnin was anyway. Uh, so what happens over the course of the uh, next year and a half is that Takadeya and Rickard do get in touch with Tokugawa authorities in Ezo and agree to uh, agree on a formula, uh, agree on a series of steps after which Golovnin would be released. The Tokugawa authorities had discovered that uh, the Russians had no plans to launch any more raids in Ezo, to launch any more attacks on Japan. They had figured out that Rizanov did order the raids, that in a sense these raids were the work of official Russian government representatives, but they decided to ignore that because they also learned uh, that the Russians uh, were not about to send more raids. So there really wasn't any danger of war. Um, <clears throat> but, nevertheless, uh, this kind of situation had to be explained satisfactorily, and um, each side held uh, captives, basically, that had to be exchanged. So what the Tokugawa authorities came up with, and a plan that they communicated to the Russians through Takadeya Kahe, uh, was uh, really ingenious. It was kind of a political performance. The Russians would agree, uh, and Rickard would be uh, the person actually doing this, uh, the Russians would agree to bring letters from uh, Russian officials that said that uh, the raids of 1806 and 1807 were not ordered by the Russian government. Um, and of course everybody agreed to uh, agree that this convenient lie was in fact the truth. Um, uh, but also uh, the uh, letters would be um, ex interpreted by the Tokugawa as a public apology. Then the Russians would be issued with a fresh admonishment letter, uh, just as Laxman was, uh, and just as Rezanov was later. Now Rickard could be admonished uh, for uh, failing to behave in a proper manner, uh, but he could be forgiven. So the Tokugawa were basically taking the moral high ground uh, and using this, uh, this crisis as a way for the Russians to come and to perform obedience, uh, to agree to go away forever and not send any more trade delegations to Japan. Uh, and this was seen as a uh, Tokugawa display of power. Let me read to you um, an excerpt from this letter of admonishment that was presented by the governor of Matsumae, a uh, Tokugawa official, uh, to Rickard. This letter says, Ships from your country have committed violence, and defenses were set up on the island of Ezo in order to defend it. Some of your men were apprehended on Kunashiri for the purposes of interrogation and evidence collection. This is referring to Golovnin. You said that your government officials knew nothing of the attacks, and that the raids were acts of piracy. This may be so, but it is still suspicious. Uh, in addition, the government of your country has sent proof that shed light on this explanations, and uh, basically after viewing your government's official communications, uh, our suspicions have melted away. In the matter of newly establishing diplomatic uh, or trade relations with foreign countries, we have throughout our countries laws that do not permit this. This is a strict law in all lands under our administration, and it will never change, right? So reiterating the ancestral law. Uh, in the future, based on the current situation, if you come desiring to open diplomatic relations, it will not end well. Uh, with this understanding, don't let things lead to violence if things do not go your way. This is a threat. You have been warned for the future. Um, and Rickard is expected to take this really kind of humiliating letter in public uh, and to reply with the following letter, which is kind of a letter of apology. Uh, we have received and understood the admonishment letter from the commander of the Matsumai garrison, uh, and I hereby state that we understand it and that we acquiesce in this matter. Basically, yes, Lord, whatever you say. Um, this letter was forwarded to the Tsar, uh, yada, 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 and uh, from this day we will not 
approach Japan. There is a public ceremony, uh, which is a big show. Uh, the local people swarm uh, the Russian boat. It's clear that the Tokugawa are using this opportunity as a public ceremony in order to demonstrate their authority. Uh, they give Rickard this letter. Rickard responds with this meek reply saying, yes, I'm sorry. Um, and he gets Golovin back and the Russians sail away. It seems as if the Russians have been humiliated. Um, and indeed, publicly, <coughs> When the Tokugawa are talking to other Japanese, uh, certainly to their own vassals, uh, they are quite clear in recording uh, that the Russians had submitted, that the Russians had been admonished. What is happening here is actually that the Russians are being incorporated into the Tokugawa system of foreign relations. Yes, they're being told to go away and to never come back, and that is precisely the role that Russia comes to play in Japanese foreign relations, and by extension that other foreign European countries come to play in Japanese foreign relations as these designated outsiders, as people whose role it is to stay out of the Japanese-centric world. Um, and this, this really does seem harsh, uh, and in a way this is also incorporating the Russians as another kind of power that performs uh, feudal uh, obedience to the Tokugawa in a way that is similar to the Dutch but is not quite the same. So the Russians are also kind of presented as these subordinates, as these underlings. Um, and as I said, this may seem very humiliating, but the Russians, uh, being in a weakened international position because, as I said, of the Napoleonic Wars, and just due to the vast distances uh, between Japan and European Russia, where basically most of Russians lived, very few actually lived in Siberia and in Alaska, um, the Russians uh, agree to, uh, in fact, uh, perform this kind of ceremony uh, because they view it as a tactical compromise. You see, there was an unofficial behind-the-scenes agreement between Rickard and the Japanese officials, uh, an understanding that was uh, facilitated by Takade Akahe and even by Golovnin, who was able to meet with Rickard and tell him, you know, the Japanese do business this way. Uh, if you publicly agree to submit to them, then privately you can get what you want. Uh, and Rickard actually does get a lot of what he wants. Um, first of all, the Tokugawa agree to overlook the fact that a Russian government representative really did order the raids. Um, chalked up as an act of piracy. Um, the, uh, the Russians are also treated with respect during the ceremony. Uh, they are uh, presented as inferiors, but they are uh, allowed uh, an honor guard, armed European soldiers on Japanese soil. I mean, this is a completely uh, unprecedented uh, diplomatic uh, event. Uh, they're allowed to fly the Russian flag during the negotiation, so they're treated with respect. And uh, unofficially, the Tokugawa actually agree to uh, one of Rickard's uh, main demands, uh, unofficially that is, and this demand was that there should be further negotiations between Japanese and Russians in order to set up a border between Japan and Russia. And the Russians, by doing this, kind of implicitly acknowledge that Ezo is Japanese controlled, uh, and the Tokugawa really like this, um, and there had been a de facto border uh, that had formed between the Russian and Japanese zones. So um, basically the aim of both parties is to uh, kind of uh, reach an understanding where that de facto border becomes an actual border. Uh, and the Russians and Japanese actually agree to have further off-the-record negotiations if the Russians agree to publicly kind of swallow their humiliation. Um, 
a boat is in fact sent out next year, uh, 1813, uh, by the Russians, uh, never reaches the Japanese for a number of reasons. Another boat is sent out in 1815, once again never makes contact. Uh, but uh, the Russians do periodically, throughout the 19th century, send mission after mission uh, attempting to make contact with the Japanese unofficially and to uh, establish trade and to negotiate a permanent uh, official border. So really, by agreeing to adopt this posture as these inferiors uh, in the Tokugawa world order, um, the, and certainly no Russian official would have acknowledged within Russia that the Russians were subordinate to the Tokugawa, uh, but uh, in the context of people operating in East Asia, uh, the Russians were perfectly willing to do this. And in some ways, this unofficial channel of communication between the Russians and the Japanese um, remained open. However, at the same time, these contacts with Russia really um, set up a image in the mind of the Japanese public, which persists to this day, an image that during the Edo period, Japan was a closed country. And the word that is used for that is sakoku. Um, basically, uh, that uh, there is this overwhelming image that Japan was closed off from the rest of the world during the uh, the Edo period because look at all these harsh laws uh, telling Europeans to leave. But of course, that's not true. 